Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to this All Signs video. I am going to do a little mini report for every single sign and this video is going to be about Mars. It's going to be about where do you get stuck? And I have been thinking about this topic a lot. Uh, I've been studying Mars in this way over many years actually because sometimes people have brought charts to me that are anomalies. They're like, you know, why why is this person not getting ahead? Why, why is nothing happening for them? And one thing that I have seen and observed over a long time of doing this now and looking at many charts and matching it up with many lives, one thing I've seen, and this was the angle that I was actually going to go down until about half an hour ago when the intro for this whole video has been changed. I'll tell you what happened. But I was originally going to talk about how when Mars is lauded by Venus, that can produce a person who doesn't, isn't very active, doesn't, doesn't put any action into life. You know, uh, they would rather have fun, they'd rather do a Venusian thing, they'd rather have fun, they'd rather go shopping, they'd rather, um, I don't know, bake a cake or something else. They'd rather do something Venusian rather than put in some real action. So that's Mars lauded by Venus or lauded by Moon. So there we can see when Mars is lauded by a feminine energy, Mars becomes quite inactive. So originally that was the angle I was going to go down and I was going to talk about the chart of Raman Maharishi and, you know, I was going to do all this other stuff. And then I started looking through my case studies folder and I started to look at people whose lives have experienced stop energy and I started to see some interesting things and then I started to um, think about you know what happens when you put Jupiter in Scorpio and anyway things were getting very complicated because then I thought maybe I should tell everyone what happens when you put each different planet in Scorpio or the eighth house which I think is going to be a separate video because what happened half an hour ago was I got this strong guidance come through and it said keep this very simple and all the case studies I've got you know the Raman Maharishi and the whole there was a whole different line of uh, thinking I wanted to go down but what we'll do is we, we're going to keep this really 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 simple and I have a different case study to talk you through but what we'll do is I'll bring up my uh, iPad here and I'm pretty sure that's recording yes that is recording and what we'll do is we'll take a look at the methodology for this video and I've been given the guidance keep this video very very simple and when we're really tuned into Mars energy it will be simple that's something that I've just learned in the last half hour that you want to you want to deal with Mars you want to keep it simple and Mars is a bit on or off, okay? And that is masculine energy. And another thing I was thinking about this morning, see, it's the Venus and Mercury side of me that today when I was thinking about how do I want to put this video together, it was getting all technical and complicated. I thought that can be quite Venus and Mercury. That can be quite sort of feminine energy and mercurial energy where we're getting bogged down by lots of details. But what is... Mars. Let's take a look. So Mars is Aries and Scorpio. Okay, these are the the big uh, signs here that Mars lords these places. And sometimes I like to think that you know Mars cr created these houses. So let's put Mars there. And we can say that masculine energy is a bit on or off. Okay, because what do we have here in the first house? We could say here on and the eighth house we could say off. Um, another way of saying this is that Aries is the beginning. Okay, the beginning. 
This is the place where we begin the hero's journey in Aries, you know, and, and in the life we will go through all of these houses and we'll end up, you know, there in the 12th house. That is the hero's journey. But here we've got the beginning in the first house. We begin in Aries. And what do we have here in the eighth? We've got stop energy. Stop. Beginning. I'll put a little exclamation point there. Well, I actually got, I've got written on my, uh, my other notes here. Go. Go and stop. There we go. I'll underline it so we know there's some symmetry there. So we've got go, we've got stop, we've got on, we've got off, we've got the beginning there in Aries. What else do we have there in Scorpio? We've got death. Okay. Now I know in Vedic astrology we've got our Maraka houses, which is seven and two, but that's another video as well. Okay, let's stick to just Mars and Mars like simplicity, I have recently discovered. Now, originally, as I said, I was going to go into, um, you know, when Mars is lauded by different things, or I was going to have a look at different planets in the sign of Scorpio. That's how I was going to approach this. But about half an hour ago, I Google searched. Now, this is unusual. I Google searched Andy Warhol. Because I was looking at Cancer and sometimes Andy Warhol can be my go-to Cancerian and I typed in to Google did Andy Warhol ever suffer from writer's block or creative block or you know whatever because he wasn't a writer really but I mean he, he was a writer thinker he was all kinds of things but anyway what ended up coming up in the results was Fran Libovitz and it was this article here which says, yet as all writers know, writer's block, which the 70-year-old Fran Leibovitz has suffered from for four decades now, is never really about laziness. And this is very interesting. Look at that, four decades of writer's block. And what's really interesting was I had written these notes before um, looking at her charts and she's a Sagittarius ascendant and for Sagittarius I had written here might get stuck due to lack of inspiration or guidance yeah I, I can absolutely see it so I think the reason uh, you know everything I was planning to talk about it just yeah in the last half hour it all got changed and I was told in my head, simplify, do not make this complicated, show Fran Leibovitz, talk about four decades of being stuck, of writer's block. And, and also I got a message to say, that's fine. You know, it's fine to be stuck. It's fine to take time. It's fine to uh, be yourself you know, and be true to that. If we have a look at, we'll just quickly have a look at Fran's chart. I mean, she's been being true to herself. So we'll bring up her chart and you'll see here that she's got Mars in Scorpio in the 12th house. So that is pretty incredible because she's got the planet of action in a very sleepy place in the stillness of Scorpio. Okay, so... And that's something I didn't write here, did I? I didn't write the ultimate stillness. That was something I wanted to put here. Ultimate stillness. Yeah. So she has, yeah, the planet of action. As I say, in a sleepy place, 12th house. It's a pretty sleepy place. can be, okay? It can be sleepy. It's relaxing anyway. Uh, or you're not doing much. You're definitely not doing much. What have we got there? We've got hospitals. We've got, you know, retreats and holidays and entertainment, movies, all that, right? So, you know, people aren't doing too much there. And you've got the planet of action there. So it makes perfect sense that she wasn't doing too much. So for periods of time in our life, it's just natural 
for us to be. Now the world might call it stuck. The world might judge it. But you know, I look at the world and I think, well, we're not all supposed to be billionaires who work 16 hours a day every day. That's not everyone's purpose in life or what, what we're, everyone's meant to be doing. That's ridiculous. And I don't think people want to do that either. But anyway, let's get into this. Let's get into these notes because that's what you're all here for. You're all here to hear how does this impact your sign. So let's get into it. Let's take a look. I'm excited to go through these. Uh, so Aries, what have you got going on Aries? All right, so where is your Scorpio? So what we're going to do is look at your Scorpio and your Aries. Okay, so we're going to have a look at your stop energy. Where do you get stuck? Well, you probably get stuck somewhere here. Now this could be from um, past trauma actually, past trauma. This could be emotional uh, and for you what's really great is that there's quite an easy remedy and that's here in Aries um, which is physical exercise. And when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about a friend of mine who she did ballet for a long time. She did it as a child and as an, an, as an adult she went back to take ballet classes. And one time she told me that she was enjoying ballet but then for the first time she tried a yoga class. And she said, I never thought too much about yoga. And then she said, but when I did the first class, she said there was this particular move and I'm lying on the mat and she's doing this move and she said um, that she just started crying, just big, huge tears and crying happened in the class. And she had a release. She had a physical release. All that trauma just, just vanished. You know, and, and it could be, um, I'm trying to think of her chart now. Is she an Aries? Well, there'll be some like now something connected with Aries I'm sure and yeah she, she definitely easily got a physical release of trauma all she had to do was do a bit of exercise and she was able to release something um, other places Aries where you could be stuck we've got here shared assets um, or things that you share shared assets uh, family in-laws can also cause stuckness, okay? So that is a possibility there. Now, it could be that it's physical exercise that you need. It could also just be um, self-differentiation. I'll put that term down there, differentiation. And that is where you define yourself as who you are that, well, I'm, I'm actually this family, you know, you're, you're addressing this to the family, right? You're like, family, I'm actually like this. I believe in this thing. I know you guys all believe in that thing. And I know the tribe is into that, but I'm into this. Okay, so you need to communicate maybe. You need to speak up. You need to be yourself and let them be themselves, but at least communicate who you are. That, that could be a good thing for you. Now, if, say, for example, you've got Saturn here in the eighth house or uh, even in the first, you know, it could be difficult for you to speak up. I, I know that. Um, that's true. And of course, there are other planetary things that I could look at, but I'll save all that for another video. But Aries, that's where you could be stuck. But look, there are pretty easy things you can do about that. So, um, and self-differentiation, you might want to look up the coach online on YouTube. He's called Jerry Wise. He can help you with that. All right. Thanks so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we are going to take a look. I'm just checking on the time. We're okay. Where do you get stuck, Taurus? All right. Now you get stuck most likely in this place here, which is the seventh house, which is relationship with partner. And that could be your business partner, but that could be who you're married to, your, your long-term committed partner, right? Uh, you most likely 
get stuck yeah in relationships basically there's so you'll get into a relationship and then you're stuck there's something you come up against something and oh I'm we're stuck we're stuck now it's not just you who's stuck it's we are stuck right and I've got here because of your stuckness it's really interesting Taurus has the reputation of being loyal and when I was studying this earlier today I was like oh yeah this is why Taurians are always considered really loyal um, so there's that you're always loyal because you'll you're, you'll stay but maybe you're staying in something that you shouldn't be staying in okay that is a possibility um, also Taurus has the reputation of being stubborn as well and we can see that yeah there's a reason for that uh, it might be the stuckness could be coming from you you know um, that's that's a possibility now what is the remedy for this so this is why it whoops this is why it's important that's why I said the stuckness could be coming from you and that's where spiritual teachings are going to be very helpful so you're going to want to get into spiritual teachings and you're going to want to get into the tea the kind of spiritual teachings that that say everything the world is a reflection of you it's all coming from you okay that's what you want to take a look at how can I own this or you know maybe there's something I can do uh, rather than just giving your power away to the partner and then forever being stuck okay so that is going to be important there so I've got yeah remedy spiritual teachings and also really simple just take breaks from your partner um, take breaks so in relationship for you it's okay if you need some little breaks here and there or just to go travel and do your own thing or that might be something that's that you need or that's good for you uh, that's something you know only you will know and you can discuss that with your partner but that could be something that's helpful all right Taurus thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so we're going to take a look at where do you get stuck and for you Gemini that could be here you might get stuck in here so what is this now this is quite interesting this can be a few things this can be now debt um, you could be stuck due to financial debt that's a possibility especially if you've got Jupiter here uh, please do let me know actually I'd love to know if you've got Gemini uh, Jupiter in Scorpio in the sixth house and have you had problems with debt I would love to know but um, debt could be an issue let's have a look at what else could be an issue could be due to your work you might feel stuck at work or it might be I'll just put at work or you might find that you do have gaps in your CV or periods where you're not working as intensely or you know um, that that is a possibility where work is not continuous it does suffer from little breaks here and there but that's natural for quite a few signs so don't worry too much about that but that could be a feature um, it could also be competitors could be something about competitors or you when when you compete or something maybe and this could be dependent on where your Mars is and where your Saturn is there'd be certain things I'd want to see but it could be that competitors yeah for, for some reason you're feeling stuck due to them that's a possibility as well uh, and I've got here the remedy is here in Aries and the remedy is bringing in new opportunities bringing in new opportunities I'll just put ops there bringing in new opportunities through networking there's something about like someone in your network might be able to help you or uh, 
And it's something about, mm, I'm also thinking with debt and things like that, shopping the market or what you know is going to be important, your knowledge, um, financial knowledge, getting, you know, um, we've also got here because Saturn is part of this 11th house here it's it's financial discipline financial discipline would be important so learning about finance i think you might just have to become more knowledgeable about finance more knowledgeable about or more knowledgeable about the broad kind of international marketplace if it's competitors or something along those lines that is possible Gemini it could also be I mean this is the house of traditionally they say enemies um, it could be you know court cases or you have to uh, these things kind of make you stuck in life or you know a court case comes up and that could be to do with family that could be to do with shared assets as well these things could make you stuck two so i'm also going to put here what are the remedies could be um, friends and older siblings as well and or um, older siblings could be helpful to you so talking to a good friend could be the thing that gets you unstuck that's that's also a possibility as well even if, like, let's say you're having issues with work, it could be that talking to a friend is a really nice remedy for you too. Gemini, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look at where do you get stuck? And you get stuck, Cancer. You can get stuck creatively. And if you watch the intro creative I'll just put here creative block you know writer's block creativity it's like the tap has been turned off it's like well I had such great ideas and now the tap has been turned off I get this sometimes I'm not even you know I don't have too much cancer but yeah I definitely sometimes oh, I don't I don't like those days when the connection goes off it's not fun um, doesn't happen to me as much anymore <laughs> but it used to happen quite a bit but yeah, I've got here, your creativity can become stuck, writer's block, as an example. Uh, another thing that you might find is, these are all things to do with yourself. So you might find that you doubt yourself. You second guess, doubt yourself. Or you second guess, whoops. And that can just keep you spiraling in a, mm, do I do this? I don't know. It can just keep you sustaining uh, a blockage if, if you're in too much doubt. Okay, and for that, I'd be interested to see what's your moon doing and what's your mercury doing because that could, could make that even worse. But yeah, you, you might find that it's, it's doubt um, that could be making you stuck. Now the remedy I have for you is, is a little bit interesting and we'll see if something new comes while I'm talking here. Sometimes new things come up that aren't on the notes. I've got here, now this is unusual because you've got your Aries here in the 10th house. So this is the place where we are seen, but this is the place of bosses and people higher up. And so this is unusual, but I'm gonna say it. I've got here, take actions to impress people, take actions to impress people. This is unusual. Let's explore it a little bit because it's a bit odd. Um, but that was the thing that came down as I was jotting down these notes. What do I mean by this? So. create something or this is this is to do or it could it could even be so what are the actions to impress people or maybe it's not you're not impressing people 
but maybe you're connecting with people who are above you. Something like this, because the sun exalts here, is why I'm thinking about this. We've also got Saturn here. So there is this thing of service, but there is this thing of taking actions to impress people. Because I was thinking about creativity. When people are creative, when, when you're, you're doing a painting or whatever, you're doing it because you want to impress people. You want people to go, well, it's one of the internal deep subconscious reasons, okay? You might not consciously want to do that, but deep down, and you know, what does Aaron Sorkin say in the, in the places you don't talk about at parties or whatever, right? Like deep down in that place, you, you know, uh, somewhere deep, you, you're doing your creativity, you want to impress people. You're making that painting, you want people to go, wow, you know? So it's something about taking actions and it's like you have to do something. You have to um, maybe, and maybe you're networking with people above you. Maybe you're wanting to get a mentor um, or you're reaching out. There's something about reaching out to people above you or people who are going to judge your stuff to just get advice or to ask them, well, what do you want? You know, maybe with your creative block here, maybe you need to, like actions, you know, what, what is this? This could be networking, networking, like with your audience as well. So it doesn't have to just be, people could be people above you, but people could be your audience or who you're making the art for or whatever. So we're just looking for simple actions that can get you out of a funk. So I've got here networking. Um, surveying. Doing a survey. Ask people what they want. You know, try and, try and maybe get from people what they want. And something in that interaction will... Um, give you the inspiration you need to get out of the funk. Okay, so that is so networking, surveying. Um, you could be looking for a mentor. Maybe you might want to mentor someone, and in that process, you will learn something, or um, that that could be something interesting as well. But some interaction with people could help you get out of that creative funk. Cancer, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look at where you get stuck and what to do about it. So where do you get stuck, Leo? So this one's quite interesting. Uh, this could be now something about your home life could make you stuck. That's a possibility. If you're a really messy person, then like I'm thinking quite literally here and I've gone right off the script. That's not written down in front of me, but there you go. That's just what popped in. Maybe someone needs it. Um, what I've got written here is relationship with mother. Isn't that amazing? So something about relationship. Oops with mother and it could be there's something about maybe a relationship with mother maybe how she raised you or her critical voice could be the one that pops up internally and makes you go oh i can't do that right it could be her internal voice is the one yeah that, that comes because because they say when you've got a critical voice in your mind be still and ask yourself who is it and very often it's either mum or dad so which one is it and depending on what your parents were like yeah i mean you know it could be both of them but um it could, could for you leo it could definitely be your mother 
Now I've got here um, how you nurture yourself or don't nurture yourself. Maybe you don't nurture yourself and that's what's making you stuck. So I've got here the remedy is simply to take your power back. Okay, take your power back. Take your power back from mother for a start. Okay, uh, so take your power back from mother and see if you can recognize um, if, if it's her critical voice that is, that is making you stuck. You might find that it is. I've got her voice, who and what you are all about. Okay, you're going to have to communicate that. You're going to have to, um, because a lot of times people, when they meet someone else, they either see who they want to see or they see an empty space, right? And so it's your job to fill the space or own your space and say, well, this is what I'm about. And don't just assume, don't just assume that I'm an empty space. Don't just assume that I'm stupid or that I'm just like you, <laughs> right? Don't just assume that. I'm here. I'm a person. I've got ideas. I've got values. I've got all kinds of things going on. Okay, so you have to, I've got here, voice who and what you are all about. Very important, Leo. Express your values. Yeah, I'll just write that one down because that's important. Express your values own your gifts communicate hey i'm here you know and i i think this all right leo that's what i got for you thanks so much for joining we are now going to welcome virgo virgo welcome thank you so much for joining so where do you get stuck all right let's take a look at it virgo i would say you might get whoops that is messy we cannot have look at this we cannot have that happening with Virgo because you guys are perfectionists. Is that true, Virgo? Is that really true? Uh, I think that's great. I think all mercurial people are, are a bit into perfection, which, uh, you know, why not? All right, so where do you get stuck, Virgo? You might get stuck in friendships. that aren't suitable now I bet you can look back over your friendships over the many years and you can be like oh yeah I definitely drained a lot of time into those stupid relationships that didn't go anywhere or whatever it is right so it, it could also be siblings that make you stuck as well siblings something to do with siblings or uh, how you all were raised together or um, certain dynamics and patterns you have with the siblings or there could be something like that that's holding you back there something to do with siblings some some i don't know what but something to do with siblings could be holding you back now i've got here what is the remedy and this is an interesting remedy <laughs> uh, i've got here Mastery of some occult, whoops, I can't spell today, occult tool or power or skill that you keep hidden. And this thing that you're going to do, it could be just that you're a great meditator and you know how to meditate and you know how to reset yourself internally. You know how to just do even just like a three minute meditation where you're like, I can just reset myself and, you know, I can focus and I can carry on. There's some secret hidden ace up your sleeve something or other that you can have as part of your toolkit that will give you confidence 
I'll give you another example of this. I think it was, was it Tony Robbins? I can't remember. There was some coach person who did this thing about like you can program in like to your wrist or something and you program in an affirmation and every time you just tap your wrist it's like it brings that mindset on or something like that I can't remember I mean this is a bit you know 90s or you know 2000s or something this is a bit old school stuff now maybe but people were doing that people were sort of programming a part of their body with positive affirmations and then every time they just you know hit that point or whatever boom they're all confident or whatever they want to be whatever state they want to be so it could be something like that Virgo uh, that you investigate or experiment with or try out but it's interesting just in you delving into this house here and having fun with the occult and not not sharing that with anybody you want to keep that hidden because we're, we've got your Aries here in the eighth house so this is definitely hidden I think I've already written that yeah but it's like this just by you stepping into that house and having fun there that can get you unstuck so see how that goes Virgo we are now going to welcome Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining so we're going to take a look at where you get stuck and what are the easy ways to get unstuck all right so let's take a look so I've got here now this is kind of interesting uh, it could be Libra something very practical for you where you get stuck it could be as simple as just a lack of resources uh, you know a lack of resources could be the thing that makes you stuck and so this is where and Andrea Libra as well I've been watching and I'll share with you my cheesy evening viewing I've been watching um, Shark Tank and Dragon's Den because I'm going to do a video you see that's why that's why I'm uh, watching all this stuff and you know there are a lot of people that they go to these Dragon's Den type shows and they pitch their what it is they're doing and they need they need investment they need to get an investor come on board and things like that so Libra that could be something where at times you are stuck now the ideal thing is to create the resources you need yourself so that you're not you know depending on anyone else we've got a dependency line here uh, and so maybe you want to just consider that yeah I don't particularly want to be dependent on anyone else I want to create it myself okay uh, and that is your independent spirit here and that is you know here in, in the place of kingdom okay kingdom but you're independent but I'll just rub that out because that's a bit of a tangent that I've just gone down there let's get back to the notes and see what I've got so lack of yeah resources might make you feel stuck your remedy is pretty simple as well um, so well that could be you know to you could also create the resources here so create the resources but your remedy is actually really really simple I would say and it is just to talk to another person talk to someone it's like just in the process of talking clarity can come into your mind I really think Libra your your whole setup here is, is actually quite simple yeah you're the, you've got sort of the simplest thing of everyone I've also got here some other remedies as well that you could travel you could engage with people abroad you could run your own business you can but you can involve other people and it, it just depends like what kind of independent streak you've got going on yeah I keep coming back to that because it's like how, how independent are you but see this is the thing Librans are great at getting people together 
So I'll just put here, involve other people. Other people to get unstuck. Yeah, it's pretty simple, Libra. I, I like the energy that you've got here. Uh, and it feels like, and depending on how independent a person you are, that will uh, modify how much you involve other people. So that, that's all really interesting, but really, really nice. All right, well, thank you so much, Libra. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So where do you get stuck, Scorpio? Well, this one, this one can be quite big <laughs> because this can be sometimes, Scorpio, you might feel, you might feel, um, yeah, the notes I've got here, this, this can be quite big. Your whole life gets stuck. Your whole life, I'll write this properly, your whole life, whole life can feel stuck okay now is this a problem is this a bad thing just looking out the window there's this incredible rain that has just started to fall that is so lovely i remember doing a reading for a scorpio ascendant she's such a lovely person and she had a phd in some scientific something or other and i remembered saying that Something about your life was like a the set of an opera with the grey clouds. And you know when you go to an opera, well, I've only ever been to one opera in my life and it's because I got a free ticket. And that was in Sydney. It was at the Sydney Opera House as well. Imagine that. It was beautiful. And that's because I knew someone in the choir anyway. And the set was, the stage was just beautiful. Like they put so much work into those. And I, I, I don't know, I described this thing to her. And anyway... In her feedback, she said to me, yes, my life feels exactly like the set of an opera. She said, what you described, she said, my life, yeah, she said, I often feel that way. It was really interesting. Um, is this a problem? Not at all, Scorpio, because this stuckness thing is an illusion, okay? It's an illusion. And the other thing is, I think the word stuck is a judgment from society. And it's a judgment from society that expects a lot of Aries. Society expects everyone to be working, hustling, working 16 hours a day and being worth a billion dollars and all this kind of thing. That's what society wants. So it judges. Well, and um, yeah, the, the word stuck, there's a sort of, um, there's a um, judgment with this. But let's reframe this whole thing, Scorpio. Your whole life, is sacred. meditative and beautiful like the dramatic set of that offer and i've actually got we've got clouds out here and we've got all this rain but it looks really pretty you know and um yeah it's so interesting so i just think for you one of the remedies is seeing that word stuck, seeing that word um, in a new way for a start. I'm really embracing the slowness, the stuckness in my life. I'm embracing it. I, um, yeah, I kind of like it. Because it's unusual, because I've watched a lot of NDEs, and apparently when we go back to that other side, when we go back home, it's different there. They don't have time. They don't have the illusion of stuckness, of stillness, of time. So we've got to enjoy 
limitations while we're here. We've got to enjoy delays. We've got to enjoy stuckness. We've got to enjoy all these unusual things because when we return to our original format, we're not going to have those things. So these are kind of um, weird sort of luxuries here. But let's take a look. So what's the remedy? What is the remedy uh, for when your whole life feels stuck? Well, one of them is actually right here in the first house. And that is physical exercise. So just put a bit more of that into your day. It doesn't have to be long. It can just be a five minute little routine that you do. And maybe you do one in the morning and you do one before dinner or you know a five minute thing it doesn't have to be a big you don't have to go to a gym or any of that and the other remedy I've got here is quite lovely as well serving uh, I've got here yes yeah, serving people in a tougher situation than yours So that could be your line of work as well. You could, um, you know, or you could take your skill and what you do for a living and somehow have like a stream of that where you do some pro bono work or you, you just help people. Maybe if you're an accountant or something and I don't know, maybe you... I don't know if they have accountants on Quora and you can answer questions for free or whatever. I'm on Quora. I've done that. I've answered people's questions for free and stuff like that. I want to get back there and do more of that. But yeah, sometimes I just don't have the energy. So, um, but like that could be something that you do, Scorpio. But I think the main thing you can do is just reframe what is stuckness and recognize that stuckness is a judgment from the outside world and what you naturally have, you've naturally, naturally got the ability to be deeply still, deep stillness. Do you know how hard people work to try and achieve what you already have? what you are already capable of easily doing just by being yourself. You can be very still. Hopefully. I mean, I'd want to look at your Mercury. I'd want to look at your Moon. I'd want to look at all kinds of things. Maybe you're not. But, <laughs> but because of your Ascendant, you have the ability to, to be deeply still. You can easily hone that. Some people find it very difficult. So embrace the stillness, Scorpio. All right, we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you for joining. We're going to take a look at where do you get stuck. And if you watched the introduction, you'll see that I brought up the chart of Fran Leibovitz, who was stuck for 40 years. And why was she stuck for 40 years? Because she had writer's block. And it's amazing because I wrote these notes before looking up her case study. And what I've written here is that Sagittarius, you might get stuck due to lack of inspiration or guidance. Isn't that incredible? So that's right here. Uh, and that's true because this is where we get our guidance. I tend to think like, you know, the seventh chakra uh, and the 12th house are somehow related. I, I will look into that, but that's an idea I have in my head right now. Um, so I've got here, yeah, stuck due to lack of inspiration or guidance. Lack of inspiration or guidance. There we go. Yeah, that's uh, your Scorpio there is in the in the 12th house. Sometimes you will feel, and I said this for Cancer as well, I think. I said that like you'll feel sometimes that it's like, well, someone turned the tap off, you know? And that, I, I really don't like it when I go through times like that where it's like, oh, I, I'm not connected. And I, yeah, I, I remember I used to, I don't have this so much anymore, but I, some years ago, I used to have like for a whole day or two, 
and I would just feel awful. And I just, oh, it's just like the tap is off. Man, what do I do? You know, I, I used to feel really bad when that would happen. I don't have that as much. And now that I've just said that, I'll probably have a bout of that come up. The universe will go, here you go. <laughs> You're saying you haven't had this for a while, so here you go. Um, I've also got, this one's interesting. You might not know which action to take. Might not know. So that could be part of the issue there. So your remedy, Sagittarius, this is what I would advise, one of the things I would advise. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of other ideas. I'm sure if I sat with this for a good half hour, I could generate more ideas. But um, for now, what I've got is you could create or define the big picture. Or add definition to create or define the big picture. I was going to write bigger picture, but no, the big picture. We want we want you to get a bit visionary here. You are a visionary, okay, Sagittarius. You you're a visionary. You like handling big things. I'd also, gosh, for all of these, I mean, I'd want to be looking at your Rahu Ketu axis as well. I should have been saying that as I've been going along. Um, that would be something I'd like to look at, but yes, okay. And this, so this is the other piece of guidance and advice. So I've got here, embody the state of being that you need. So you might think it's an action. You might think the next thing I need to do, it's an action. I don't know what it is. It's not an action. What you need is you need a state of being. You need to embody Yeah, embody the state of being you need. So, if you need to be um, it's, a, it's about like getting into the feeling of who you need to be. So if it's a, an art project, maybe you need to get into the state of being an art director or a creative director. You need to just embody and you fake it till you make it, pretend, just be like, okay, well, if, like, I've, I've just got to, yeah, I've got to embody that that state of being. You just need to have the state of being, state of mind even, uh, would be good. Yeah, I've got here, might not be an action, might even be a state of mind. State of mind, I'll put here, of mind. You need to adopt, and there's a little bit fake it till you make it, but like just pretend to be that. And that could get you unstuck. Okay, so it's something worth experimenting with. This is experimental. Um, you could either get a bit visionary or you could um, embody the state of mind that you need to be. All right, well, thank you so much, Sagittarius. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look. Where do you get stuck in life? Well, now you could get stuck... Capricorn, due to a few things, you could get stuck due to um, that you don't have the right people around you. So I'm going to put here unsuitable friends. Um, could even be siblings or something about the way you were raised with your siblings and there's some unhealthy dynamic there and it's that thing that is uh, making you stuck or blocked or something along those lines. That's a possibility. Could be lack of resources as well. Um, lack 
of resources as well is another possibility. So a little bit like uh, Libra, I think it was. Or like lack of ability to create opportunities or like, so like maybe, okay, you're trying the whole social media thing, but it's not expanding. It's that. It's like you're trying stuff, but that thing is not expanding. So how do we get you unstuck here? Well, now this might not seem like a, um, a remedy that will directly solve any issues, but bear with me because it's a good one. <laughs> the remedy is to nurture yourself. Self-love, Louise Hay, all that cheesy stuff that, you know, is very repetitive and people roll their eyes and all that. But it's really this that's important. Nurturing yourself, believe it or not, is just going to make you, and this is your physical being, this is your every dimension. This is how you are emotionally, spiritually, your heart. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, physically, definitely eat good food. And it's something about your aura and everything will just become so attractive. And, you know, this will start to work beautifully. This will bring in all kinds of, this will bring in good people and good, good resources and good, um, you know, all the good. I'll just put good. <laughs> It'll bring all the good stuff in when you nurture yourself. And there might not seem to be a connection with that. Nurturing yourself, another thing you can also do when it's nurturing yourself, I also see like the house is an extension of your body. So um, keep an organized home, keep a neat home, keep a, an organized home, keep a, you, you're Capricorn, you'd be great at doing that. So yeah, um, see your house as an extension of your physical body. I think I'll write that one down. See your house or home or whatever as an extension of your physical body. And when it's all running beautifully and in a tip-top sort of a way and you're organized and it's all great and you're healthy and all that, that's great. Everything's going to come to you. Uh, physical body. All right. Thank you so much, Capricorn. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look. Where do you get stuck, Aquarius? And for you, it's right here. Your career gets stuck. So you might have gaps in your CV, or you might have periods of time where you're just not working. That's all natural. That's all healthy. That's fine. Uh, and I'm glad that the world is evolving and changing. You know, as we've got Pluto moving through Capricorn, all the old established ways and ideas and all of that is being broken down. And I've still got some friends who are in those old school mindsets. I've got one friend who she, she thinks, you know, that yeah, like, if, oh, if I don't get, if I don't stay in a job for a long, she, she's new in this job. I said, well, why don't you quit? Why don't you get another one? She says, oh, well, it looks bad on the CV. See, I don't believe any of that stuff. I've grown out of all that. I mean, well, look at me. I'm not doing any of that anymore. But, um, but yeah, I mean, she, she's still really in some of those old school ways. But I really think all of that stuff's breaking down. Nobody cares about that anymore. I remember when I was in advertising that I would see people, they would come to a, a new place where I was working. And one guy, I remember he was this young account director and he was going places. I could see that. And after just a few weeks of being there, he thought, I'm getting out. <laughs> like he was just like, this is a terrible place. I'd been there probably about a year. But um, he, was, he, could just, he just turned up checked everything out and thought, yeah, this place is going nowhere, I'm getting out. And then off he goes, well, I actually respect those people. 
And I think other people do as well. You know, I didn't think three months on a CV looks bad at all. I mean, if it's terrible, get out, you know. Um, I was just there because it was like I was part time and it was a side thing and I was writing something and, you know, whatever. But um, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting, all that. So career gets stuck sometimes, but it's, it's not stuck. Um, that word is such a judgment from the outside world. It's, you know, that you just need maybe pivot points in your career or you actually need downtime to recharge because, you know, you shouldn't overwork. You're a Saturnian. Look at that. You're, you're Saturn ascendant. You're, you're always working. You know, even, even if there's downtime, even if you're not working, technically, you probably are working, you know, because you're the Saturn ascendant. Saturn Ascendant, sometimes they don't know how to rest. You don't know how to rest. We've talked about this before, Aquarius. Hey, look at that. You've got your um, Saturn Lord in your 12th house. Yeah, so it's like this is necessary. This is, gosh, I'll just write that, necessary. <laughs> that you have some enforced breaks in your career, if, if you've noticed that. Now, the remedy to stuckness in your life is pretty simple for you. Um, all you have to do is work on your confidence. Your confidence or courage, you know, upping that. The other things you can do are really nice and simple. Um, spend time on your hobbies. And what you might find is that I'm just thinking of an Aquarius I know who had this exact thing happen. She wasn't working for a time and she decided, right, I'm just going to do what's fun for me. And what was fun for her at the time was she started writing, which was separate, different to her career. Anyway, she started writing and then this amazing job came in. You know, she, she hadn't had work for many, many months. Then for two weeks, she started writing this blog thing because it was fun. And then boom, a big job came in. And, you know, because um, she was sending out that busy signal to the universe. But it's not just any busy signal. She was sending out a happy busy signal. And enjoy, I'm enjoying life. You know, I'm doing my hobby. Yay, I love this thing. Um, when you do your hobby, that's something you love. You're passionate about it and you're sending that energy into the universe and that will get things going again. Um, the other thing you can do, Aquarius, which is also really lovely, is just have fun with friends. Socialize, go out, have a good day or two out with your friends or whatever you do, do, do something like that and that will get you unstuck. All right, Aquarius, so well, thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, how are you doing? How are we doing on time? We're okay. It stopped raining. I just thought I'd tell you that. It was raining a few signs ago. Where do you get stuck, Pisces? Well, you get stuck here in this place. So you might actually get stuck sometimes when you're learning something. Do you know, I don't have too much Pisces in my chart, but wow, have I been stuck in this domain sometimes. I'm just, yeah, sometimes with, um, with astrology. And the reason for this is because when I've done a full day of working doing astrology, the last thing I want to do in the evening is watch more astrology videos <laughs> and be learning astrology. And I know I need to learn more things. I mean, I'm learning all the time. On the job and doing this work and all that i'm thinking about this stuff all the time so i kind of need to take a break but yeah you might have this thing that you know you need to learn but then you're not learning it and that might be worrying you or something like that you're like i know i need to learn this thing yeah i've had some things like that in in the back of my mind but as i say i don't have too much pisces in my chart but but yeah, I've got some, I do have a significant lord lording my 12th and so therefore, yeah, I do have this in my life. Um, anyway, 
You could also feel, here's another place where you could feel stuck. When you're trying to have more control over your own life. Okay, so you're, you're going for more control over your own life or how things go or, and, but like you feel like you're stuck. It's like, oh, well, it's just this. Like I can't, I can't change things or um, I can't be the fire starter in my own life. Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe because you're, okay, so you've got water in these fiery, yeah, okay, I see that. Uh, so you could feel like maybe attempts that like I want to grow or be seen more or you know it just it, uh, it just gets watered down or it doesn't happen or you know this kind of thing so that is a possibility so the remedy for you is pretty simple you can talk to um, well and I'm going to be specific here I'm actually going to say a family member you love and trust or um, a childhood friend or good friend friend who feels like family yeah so if you've got someone like that in your life brilliant because all it would take to just maybe ignite things again or get things going in the way you want it to is is really just to have a good conversation about it with someone and through that conversation through talking about it you will get your own answers okay so that is quite strongly possible there i've also and this is an, another interesting remedy right here uh, which i'm going to jot down how oh, where am i going to do that i'll put that there this one's I'll, I'll run it by you so i've got here create savings or create wealth in your life or wealth and that's going to give you a lot more power and confidence and feeling that you've got more control over your own life because you've got that big savings there. And we want to really be looking at the position of Mars. We'd want to, there are lots of things I'd want to look at uh, for that. But I mean, these are just some little things. And, and we're just really looking for what are the simple, easy, quick things that you can do to change up the energy a little bit, to give you a little bit of movement so that, you know, you're not so stuck. Uh, we're all stuck, believe me. And you might be thinking, well, I'm really stuck, but everyone else in my life isn't. No, we've just gone through all 12 signs. Everybody is stuck somewhere. You know, it, it really is a feature in everybody's life. And uh, so we mustn't think that, oh, it's only just me or whatever. Oh no, it's everybody. Everybody has to go through that. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. One thing I love about doing these videos is I love reading your insights about your chart. So the comment sections of these style of videos are often very rich and have a lot of astrology themselves. So feel free to share. Thanks so much for joining. And I look forward to seeing you next time.